Deputy Prime Minister calls on public servants to be committed. ECP Governor wants to stop tax evasion. And work begins on Bana Bridge Bypass Road. This is the National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer Charles Abel wants public servants to improve their level of commitment in 2018. Minister Abel says an effective public service will result in greater achievement of the country's development goals. The Deputy Prime Minister was among other state ministers attending a dedication program for public servants this morning in Port Moresby. Senior cabinet ministers, including heads of state agencies and other officers in the public sector, were present for the dedication program this morning at the Sir John Guys Indoor Complex. Over 100 public servants attended to pledge another working year for 2018. Speaking prior to the dedication prayer, the Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer says the level of responsibility and commitment by public servants must improve in 2018. He says the country will prosper and achieve its development goals if the public service is effective. The political team, under the leadership of our good Prime Minister, Honorable Peter O'Neill, looks forward to working with you to deliver a successful APEC this year, as we did for the Pacific Games and the Under-21 World Cup, and most importantly, to delivering on the aspirations of the beautiful people of Papua New Guinea. The public service eats up almost two-thirds of the country's revenue. This goes to pay salary, retrenchment and other expenses. Minister Abel says despite the struggling economy, the public service must be committed. We have made education and health more accessible, but of course there remains many challenges as we struggle to keep up with a rapidly growing population to build a deeper and more resilient economy. Chief Secretary to Government Isaac Lupari reminded the public servants of the dreams our country's forefathers had. He challenged them to be a driving force behind the government's decision making. The attitude and behavior of people as public servants, how can we change that? That is a fundamental question. I believe that rests in the constitution of our country. The program concluded with a prayer session to uphold the country's largest workforce. And the important event taking place this year. Jack Lopave, Jr., National MTV News. Evading tax payments in East Sepik province will come to a stop. Governor Alan Bird says the province has missed out on internal tax revenue to the tune of $5 million every year. He says the East Sepik Provincial Government is now working with the Internal Revenue Commission to tighten tax laws and its process of payments. You know, they involved in everything, all by themselves. The East Sepik Governor says it has been a practice for business houses in Wewak to travel to Port Mosby and pay tariffs owed to the province. Governor Bed says this is a reason why the internal revenue for the province has been unstable over the past five years. A lot of our GST, uh, mostly from the foreign-owned shops, uh, they're dishonest about the GST that uh, we are supposed to be earning. Since taking office after the 2017 national elections, the governor says business houses, especially foreign-owned, will be under scrutiny when it comes to paying tax. About 10 big foreign businesses are operating in the East Pacific capital. Governor Bed says joint efforts with the Internal Revenue Commission Office will see a change in how businesses pay tax to the provincial government. Previously, all the payments used to be made in Mosby. Now, uh, IRC has beefed up the uh, uh, capacity here and they're working very closely with our finance people. In fact, they're working together. Starting early next month, a series of inspections will be done. Governor Bed says a significant funding is also captured in the 2018 budget to support this inspection exercise. One of the new changes in the budget is that I've allocated quite a bit of money towards revenue collections. So we are going to have a team of people here that's going to check every business on a monthly basis. And 
if we have to do things like uh, um, register the cash, cash machines and all these things, then that's what we're going to do. And we're going to Jack Lopavit, Jr., National MTV News. Work has begun on opening a bypass road for the people of Sumka and Bogia after the collapse of the Banab Bridge in Medang. The 10-kilometer road will cut through Banab Village and will act as a temporary access route. The 10-kilometer road will cut through Banab Village and reconnect to the main Medeng Bogia Highway. This will provide a temporary access for commuters while the works department starts work on replacing the bridge. The importance of road is seen when a bridge collapses or when a road gets cut off. And there is a, there is a chaos there, there is a mess over there, <coughs> which uh, we have all uh, witnessed and uh, very important. Um, Priority is to open up this so we relieve the pressure. Works on the bypass road will now give the Banap community proper roads, something they have been lacking for years. I a long time that I have a company so I'll be long. A long company will make the road in a time blow all finish long. Okay, long will go out and I'll cut off the road. Time till I bridge and I broke and give the people opportunity or some government by halving plan. The intention for the local people here for the bypass is that. Uh, they really want the national government to, you know, yeah. give them a fixed, uh, fixed bridge, not a temporary one. So uh, it's a blessing for the local people, yeah, I believe so. Even though uh, we will still fix the road, uh, I mean, fix the bridge. But, uh, I mean, for this timing, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for the local people here to have the access road open. Early this month, the Banner Bridge collapsed after a semi-trailer broke its middle support structure. Since then, commuters have been forced to carry their goods by boat or use a makeshift bridge, which is a costly exercise. Sumkar district and Bogia district are mostly affected, and they are the two districts that uh, play a very important role in the economy of the province. So right now it's a disaster. However, the work secretary says come Sunday, materials for building a new bridge will arrive and work will start. He also says given the weak surface structure of the old bridge, it will be replaced with a new permanent bridge. Uh, looks like the uh, main bridge will take time because of the fact that um, uh, the pier, the condition of the centre pier is very critical. At this stage, uh, uh, experts have uh, visited the site and uh, we are waiting for the full report to be uh, submitted to the department and then uh, we'll take whichever option is visible and quick and we can start uh, working on the on the reconstruction of the uh, bridge that collapsed on the main highway. Secretary Were also urged the surrounding communities to work with the works department. We thank the communities who have, uh, who have um, uh, taken ownership and given the support and cooperation to government uh, as well as the works department team on the ground and uh, uh, We'll continue to look at uh, you know, how we work together to uh, make this road uh, quickly uh, accessible to the public. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has extended his best wishes to the people of Australia on their national day. The Prime Minister says PNG's relationship with Australia will continue to be strengthened and improved. He says Australia is PNG's largest investor and bilateral engagement will continue as in the past four decades. The Prime Minister says the bond with Australia will be enhanced as PNG prepares to host the 2018 APEX Summit in November. You're watching National MTV News among stories after the break. Concerns from UPNG about the low quality of students entering university and lay education officials advising parents to pay. Stay tuned for details. Welcome back. University of Papua New Guinea Acting Vice Chancellor Vincent Malaybe is concerned that the quality of students coming into UPNG cannot cope with the standards at the institution. Mr Malaybe made this remark after saying the university had experienced a drop in the number of students progressing to the next semester of the academic calendar in the recent past. He said many students cannot cope with what is being offered at the university and that contributes to costs for university resources, which requires money. 
the issue for the university. Mr. Malaybe says the issue is of viability to ensure quality. He said over the years the number of students progressing from a program continues to decrease and those results in less professional graduating out of university. Doctors are an example. For the first time in the history of this university, we cannot meet the quota that is required for medicine. We, we could supply for other areas in, in health sciences, but not doctors. This is the first time in our history. We could not lower the bar just to pass those 60 people to go. We said no. Malaybe says this puts pressure on the university to increase resources on educating students to university standards, and that in itself costs money. One of the things that is causing the university operational cost to increase is the quality of output from grade 12 into the university. That quality has been dropping. He said every year the university is faced with funding issues and the government in the past has failed to keep their end of the bargain by providing support. The university currently has a budget cost of 224 million. 190 million of this is recurrent cost, but the university was only allocated 51.3 million in the 2018 budget. We still believe, UPNG Council still believes that government is government, and government has been empowered by the people to make decisions and to, to deliver uh, what it can to the people. University Chancellor Dr. Nicholas Mann says the university is trying to move down the path of independence and not to rely on government who has other commitments. He said this is to ensure quality of education at the university level and its standards are not compromised. Stacy Yalo, National, MTV News. Kumul Training Institution, operating under registration number 121 of the National Training Council of Labor Department, has expired since 2012. NTC says to date the institution has failed to comply with NTC regulations despite efforts to assist the institution to reapply for application in the past years. This announcement by NTC follows yesterday's statement by Education Department Secretary Dr. Uke Kombra that its teachers college, Kumul Teachers College, is not recognized by the Education Department as well. NTC says Kumul Training Institution is one of 97% of private training institutions under the Labor Department that has failed to comply with NTC requirements and the new qualification framework. While NTC has the powers to revoke the registration of institutions such as Kumul Training Institution, it does not have the powers to penalize private skills and training institutions. This is because its current policy does not give them that mandate. NTC says new legislation is being drafted to have this and other issues addressed. According to NTC, each institution under its guidance is given two years to reapply for registration. And while some institutions have complied, Kumu Training Institution has not been cooperative. While it can revoke its registration, it can still operate as a business as it is registered under the IPA. Currently, the institution has advertised several training programs in the dailies for the 2018 academic year, ranging from technical courses to teachers' training and recently an avionics program. While NTC questions the integrity of these courses being offered, it is taking steps to discuss with rightful authorities for compliance. Nonetheless, it is up to the parents and guardians now to make the choice to decide the kind of quality education they are paying for their children. If we don't sanction those things, they may be using curriculum that is not been uh, recognized in the system. And at the end of the day, the victim becomes the students. And they, if they want to get certification, we will reject the certification. It's a waste of time going to those institutions. Stacy Yalo, National, MTV News. Education Minister Nick Kuman says there has to be a stop to institutions operating in the country without registration. He said many institutions in the country are operating without complying with regulations set by authorities. He said institutions that are taking advantage of loopholes in the system and who continue to operate will be dealt with. Minister Kuman says the buck has to stop somewhere with institutions who are still operating without complying to set regulations. 
And the only body that is uh, that manages the Education Act is the National Education Board. And uh, institutions, they just can't go and open up a school and say, look, students come and I'll educate you. You can uh, you come and pay fees and all those sort of things. You have to make sure that uh, whatever they do, they must make sure they follow the law. The minister's statement comes after recent media publications of Kumul Training Institution enrolling students after the department's announcement that its programs are not sanctioned by the Department of Education. We're talking about the lives of people. Those are young kids who, who need to go to school, they have to go to school. But I want to make sure that they must go through the proper channel and they are sanctioned by the government to run an institution that over education to, uh, to the young people in this country, they must do it the right way. And I don't think what they've done is right. He says students who are enrolling at schools that are not recognized by the Education Board are wasting their time as their qualification will not be recognized by the Education Department or the Department of Higher Education. If we don't sanction those things, they may be using curriculum that is not been uh, recognized in the system. And at the end of the day, the victim becomes the students. And they, if they want to get certification, we will reject the certification. It's a waste of time going to those things. Stacy Yalo, National MTV News. Higher Education Secretary Father Jan Juba has been ordered by the National Court to register IBS University and to give full cooperation to the university to operate and allow enrollment of students in order to start the 2018 academic year without causing any administrative delays. Justice Derek Hartron today reminded Father Jan of his obligation to comply with the court orders whilst extending the interim orders by IBS to close of business next Friday to refrain Father Jan from taking further administrative steps under the Higher Education General Provision Act. A notice of motion filed by DHS Secretary's lawyer on Monday could not be heard this morning. The lawyer did not comply with the rules of the court to properly plead the grounds upon which the defendant sought dismissal. The notice of motion was to dismiss proceedings filed by IBS University on the 4th of January 2018 and to set aside the interim orders granted on 4th of January 2018, which allowed the registration of IBS as a private university and the operation as a university in PNG pending determination of legal issues surrounding the establishment of IBS University raised by Father Yang Shuba as acting secretary for DHEST. The court adjourned the application to next week Friday at 9 a.m. for hearing and allowed an opportunity for Father Yang's lawyer to rectify the defect in the application. This is the third consecutive unsuccessful attempt by the lawyer to set aside the orders. The first two attempts were on the 12th and the 19th of January 2018. IBSU lawyer Walio Mapiso told MTV he has given notice to Father Jan Shuba through his lawyers putting him on notice that after 8 a.m. next Monday, he will be charged with the offense of contempt of court for deliberate disobedience of a court order not to register IBS University over the last 20 days since the court orders have been issued. Stacy Yellow, National, MTV News. Marbe's Provincial Program Advisor for Education, Keith Jiram, said in 2017 the province only received nearly 35 million kina of tuition fee-free payments to schools by PNG's government. The payment was made only for first and second quarter, and the schools are still waiting for the outstanding payments for third and fourth quarter. Jiram said schools will continue to operate with fees paid by parents. Morabe's Provincial Education Division doesn't have a confirmation of how much the province will get from the National Department of Education regarding the full tuition fee-free payment for a year. Morabe's Provincial Program Advisor for Education, Keith Jiram, said in 2017, nearly 35 million Kina TFF payment for the first two quarters was paid to schools in Morabe. The overall outstanding for the last two quarters is not confirmed. Towards the end of last year, we freed all the accounts, and I know some money are there to help the school run while waiting for the TFF, and parent support fee will help the school run. The tuition fee free education policy was established in 2012 by the government. TFF has three components K 
cash administration, infrastructure and teaching and learning materials. The government says it's committed in delivering the TFF policy, but the delay in releasing the TFF payments has forced schools to impose fees. So there is different in charging of the parent support fees for those kids that go to unregistered schools. Two, to cater for the boarding schools. Three, the transfer in students. Their names are in the other school, but the actual students in the other school, and TFF money go to where the names are. And the other school where the students are, the population is high. In December 2017, Morbis Provincial Education Board has approved that parents pay these fees for these levels of education. Two weeks ago, Morbis Provincial Education Board met and reviewed the fees. The fees will increase this year. So the charging of project fees help make government policy work. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. This is Friday's news. Coming up next, five more winners in Telecom's Top Up and Win Cash promotion. And Lay's Fire Chief says businesses in Lay must help with fire equipment. Stay tuned for details. Welcome back to the news. Telecom P&G today announced its five winners for draw number 13 of its top up and win cash promotion. The five lucky winners were drawn by Telecom's National Call Center and Service Assurance Manager Ellen Pamun and her call service team together with Manager Products and Business Development Connie Alone. Also to commemorate Australia Day celebrations, Telecom P&G is encouraging its customers to subscribe to an IDD Pass plan to get free call minutes and SMS to Australia. And then these are the, these are the plans. When you subscribe to any of those plans, you get all those 5,000 kina more now in the hands of Telecom's top up and cash win promotion winners. Telecom's 100,000 kina cash giveaway is now left with 35,000 kina, which is still up for grabs in the next seven weeks before the promotion ends. Winners for today's draw were evenly distributed from individuals to corporate and private companies that are Telecom's customers. Uh, this is the draw number 13, and Telecom is um, going to give the uh, prices out for the lucky winners who have been faithfully uh, going through uh, buying our vouchers, prepaid cards, uh, from the denominations that are mentioned on a promotion. So let's go on with the um, online draw to see who are the lucky winners. She says all telecom customers are eligible and can go into the draw upon purchasing a maximum of 20 kina credits and above through any form of electronic services only available to telecoms customers. With the 13th draw now closed and 65,000 kina won by customers around the country, telecoms new and existing clients are finding fresh reasons to be part of it, to win it. These three ATMs, they, are, they have more than 306 ATM, ATMs nationwide. We dispense to that one as well. Okay. So all our terms covered, all prepaid service platforms covered. ADSL, uh, that's usually connected by our phone lines of, in homes and businesses. YMAX is our wireless service. And our, our modern, yes, high speed and most affordable 4 GLT service in the country right now. So everybody in that bucket of prepaid is eligible for you. While hundreds of telecom customers register every day, so far 65,000 individuals and business houses have had the chance to walk away with 1,000 kina cash each week. With seven more weeks before the promotion ends, new and existing customers still have the chance to win 1,000 kina cash. The next five lucky winners will be announced next Friday during the 14th draw of Telecom's top up and win cash promotion. Now also to celebrate the Australia Day celebrations, Telecom P&G is treating its customers to a free minute call to Australia upon one day and three day IDD pass plans with seven kina buying 15 minutes of free calls and 15 SMSs while 20 kina is buying 60 minutes of calls to Australia as well as 30 SMSs valid for three days. Godwin Eki, National MTV News. 
More than 100,000 kina worth of items have been confiscated at 50 retail and departmental stores in Medang this week. This exercise was a combined operation led by the Medang Urban Local Level Government in support with Customs, Nakia, Police, Quarantine and PNG Power. The week-long operation ended today with the goods locked up in a container for destruction. The operation began on Monday by officials from MULLG, PNG Customs, Nakia, Police and Quarantine. More than 100,000 kilo worth of items which included food, medical drugs and electronic cables were confiscated. Most items condemned have already gone past their expiry date or have broken seals or has foreign labeling on them. We only got something we all supposed to all buy. Salim, Pamplan, no God. But this one, the Moron, Plapin, now, yeah. I'm browsing because I'm causing fire. This combined operation is the first to be carried out in Medang. The officials are planning to continue this exercise quarterly to help minimize damage counterfeit or illegal items from being sold in shops. Martha Louise, National MTV News, Medang. An awareness session on social media was conducted by the Catholic Bishops' Conference Secretary for Communication and Youth for the staff of St. Charles Luanga Secondary School yesterday. Facilitator Father Ambrose Pereira says the purpose of the session was to make teachers aware of social media and the impacts it has on their students. Father Ambrose spoke on the importance of understanding social media, moral ethics and use of information. The two-hour session was attended by 22 teachers at the school library. The session concluded with activities and discussions on addressing social media in schools. Lay Fire Service boss Bal Kenna says it is necessary for businesses and residents in Lay to invest in firefighting equipment because buildings in Lay are prone to fires. This is because of the industrial activity in the city. Mr Kenna made these comments after one of Lay's old buildings burnt down yesterday. The Lay Fire Service Commander Superintendent Bal Kenna made this appeal to business houses to avoid the loss of property to fires. With the growth of industrial activity in the city, business houses must safeguard their properties by installing firefighting equipment. They must have the necessary firefighting equipment installed in there. Whether it be residential, store, commercial industry. It's a mandatory requirement. They must provide all this in there. Uh, areas. The same call has also been made to residents. All the city dwellers to have the fire extinguisher and smoke that can install in there. Between the years 2013 to 2017, Lay City was subject to a number of fire incidents. Buildings that were burnt down within this period include two Brian Bell shops, the Pelgans Wholesale, the G4S base and several others. Yesterday, the fire service responded to a fire in town and managed to control it before it spread to other shops. It's never like the yesterday years where you may start looking, well, fires are when you plan over. Now we are able to contain the spread of fire. Lay's fire service is currently operating with one fire truck for the whole city. Lucy Kupana, National MTV News, Lee. This is National MTV News. We take a look at the National Soccer League's draws for this weekend. Up next in Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. So the National Soccer League and round three of the competition tomorrow will see six teams take the field. And the match between defending champions Totti City Dwellers and 2017 first runner-up Medang FC in Ley is going to be a deja vu of the 2017 Grand Final. Totti City Dwellers will host Medang FC tomorrow at the St. Ignatius Kilage Stadium in Ley. 
Having made a strong statement from the 8-1 win over Buang FC last Saturday, dwellers are expected to fare well once more given that they have the home ground advantage. Medang, on the other hand, were also the victors of their match against Southern Strikers 5-1. And as the first runner-up to the Toti dwellers last season, they have proven they can give the defending champions a good run for their money. While Southern Strikers will look to improve their performance when they take on Besta FC here in Port Mosby. The Besta outfit is expected to continue their good form from the 3-1 win over Momase last week. And Morbe Wawans will take on Buang FC while Momase is on by. Dinero Strako National MTV Sports. Still on the National Soccer League, the double header in lay this weekend is set to excite the football mad province of Morbe. The Sir Ignatius Kilage Stadium will host the competition front runners Toti City Dwellers and Medang FC going head to head at 3 p.m. Both teams have not lost a match since round one. Buang FC may well be shaken off the cobwebs from last week's 8 1 hammering at the hands of defending champions Toti City Dwellers. This time they're facing competition newcomers Morobe Wawins, who are coming off a bye. Buang coach Raymond Nasa will have a lot to do to settle with his players, making it clear in a post-match interview. Up in the front, I have the strength, but it's just that the midfield, that the coordination in the midfield, it, it, it didn't work. Had the midfield work, we, we could we could had some goals. Fitness was one of the factors that caused Nasa's men to slack off in defense, allowing an onslaught from the dwellers, one which Nasa is critical not to repeat in their match against Morobe Wawins. There should be some changes to, uh, for our lineup. Uh, we we are playing uh, our friends from uh, Lay, Morobe Wawans next week. So uh, hopefully we should uh, pick up from where we went down. Meanwhile, for Toti City Dwellers coach Peter Gunemba, defeating a softer opponent by a huge margin doesn't mean his team is unbeatable. When we look at the strength of the opponent, you know. I'm almost always optimistic to see the to play uh, a better side. This is where I can see my weakness. But uh, city dwellers will need the service of midfielders Jacob Sabua, Emmanuel Simon, and Troy Gunemba to create opportunities for incumbent striker Raymond Gunemba and Nigel Debinyaba to score goals if they want to get past their more technical and skilled opponents in Medang FC. It didn't happen. They started very slow. And then they gradually picked up. Uh, it's just like I see the boys are there, they're still underestimating the opponents, thinking that they will win every game. But this is something that it must not happen. Medang will be a tough side to beat, having won two from two and boasting the experience of Emmanuel Arem, Vanya Malagian, and veteran Neil Hans. The match could end in a tiebreaker. However, city dwellers have reverted to their usual 4 2 3 1 format, and they've promised to maintain that throughout this season. So we, we get back into our tune again, so I believe uh, we will maintain that position, uh, formation, and we'll continue to play. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. To cricket, the Hebo PNG Barmandis have had their fair share of bad news, but the news of fast bowler Nosiana Pokana comes as a blow just when they are in preparation for the World Cup qualifying campaign in Zimbabwe. ICC announced the suspension yesterday following an independent assessment that found Pokana's bowling action to be illegal during their ODI match against Hong Kong in Dubai on 8 December 2017. Pokana is now suspended from bowling in international cricket and this decision is expected to be enforced by all cricket federations as well. Though at the moment Pokana still has the option of applying for reassessment. You're watching True Guy Sports on National MTV News. More when we come back. Stay tuned. True Guy Sports. Welcome back to True Guy Sports. Witness Vikings recruit and PNG International Stanton Albert has been granted his UK visa. He was approved his visa after his immigration meeting with the Home Office. Stanton, just like brother Wellington, can now start his career with the Vikings. He had his final immigration meeting with the Home Office, where he received his permit to work and live in the UK. Wellington Albert received his visa last week and has started training with the Vikings. 
VIQI has jumped on board to sponsor Stanton for the 2018 season. Stanton can now join brother Wellington in trying to secure a spot in Dennis Bet's side for the opening match against Catalan's Dragons on Sunday, 4th February. The Albert brothers left Port Moresby two weeks ago to pursue their rugby league careers in the English Super League with the Witness Vikings. Albert joins the Vikings from the SPPNG Hunters and will bring power and strength to the Vikings forward line. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. And that wraps up Chukai Sports for tonight. Up next, the weather details for tonight and tomorrow. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Heavy rain with possible squalls in Port Moresby. Rain showers in Daru. Rain in Kiriman. Possible heavy rain in Alutau and Popendita. In the Momasi region, a thundery rain in Wau and rain expected in Leh, Medang, Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, heavy rain and possible squalls in Lorengau, Kabing and Kimbe. Heavy rain in Kokopo, Rabaul and Buka. And in the Highlands region, rain then morning fog in all centres. Forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours. Strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of Papua New Guinea, including inland areas of New Guinea Islands. Gale force winds over coastal waters of central province and eastern and western Milne Bay waters, including southern coast of West New Britain. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru, Kiwai Island to Kerma, Yule Island to Hood Point, Samare Island and with waters of eastern and western Milne Bay Islands, seas of 2.5 to 3.5 metres. Waters of Samare Island to Cape Fogel, Finch Half In with waters of Manus and its western group of islands and with waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville, seas of 2.5 to 3 metres. Waters of Finch Half In to Vitias Strait, Dampier Strait to Siasi Islands, Long Island, Medang to Bogia to Iwak, Aitape, Banimo and northern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 2 to 3 metres. Ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea. Seas rough with southwest winds at 25 to 34 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas rough with northwest winds at 25 to 34 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, seas rough with northwest winds at 25 to 34 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas moderate with northeast to northwest winds at 15 to 25 knots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with doing with Dulux. Before we go, recapping our main stories for tonight. Public servants urge to improve their level of commitment. ECP governor wants a stop to tax evasion in his province and work has begun on a bypass road next to collapsed Bana Bridge in Medang. And that's been the news, sports and weather for today, Friday, January 26, 2018. On behalf of the entire MTV National News Team, pleasant viewing. Good night.